on the internet broadcast system. It's Thursday. Uh, it's Wednesday at seven thirty. Wednesday. Central. It's time for some some Max Narcana Fantasy Adventure game. How's everybody doing? Howdy, y'all. Good. All right, your audio seems to be pulling through. Slick, slick, slick. Oh no. But this is showing. We are sufficient. Let's, uh... <laughs> testing, testing one, two. I'm gonna hide that. I'll just bring that up. All right. Oh la la. Oh no, where did? No, where did it go? Bidet, bidet. Oh, bidet, bidet, bidar. I, I will still stand up for the Dungeons and Dragons movie. Any day of the week. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> I ain't never been so you serious. You must be joking. The Dungeons and Dragons movie. Jeremy Irons? What movie? But I was. Yeah, I yeah. saw it opening night in theaters. <laughs> Yeah, were you dressed I up though? It since like the nineties or whenever it came out. It, there were people in elf costumes laughing at how bad that movie was. <laughs> oh, no, I will. I will gladly host like a movie watch if you guys want to get together and watch the Dungeon Dragon movie. Jeremy Irons is the best villain ever, ever in that movie. <laughs> wait, wait. You think he was better than uh, Damodar? Yeah. Well, I like Damodar's the best henchman. <laughs> but Profion, he does that. What about the second movie? We we don't want to we don't want to ruin the second movie. We don't want to ruin the second movie. We'll we'll take these. Marlon Wayne. Yeah, Marlon no, Wayne. I was just saying who was the who was the. We're the, not gonna spoil the it. Best bad guy. We're not gonna spoil that. <laughs> All right. Oh. Um. Yeah, Marlon Wayne's is in it. Um. Oh, what's that guy's name? Justin. Bieber. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Justin Whalen. Justin Whalen. There you go. From uh, Child's Play. There you go. What? He was child. He was in Child's Play three. Oh, never mind. Was he the child? Or the player? He was the child. <laughs> All right. Who was played with? <laughs> There's what I was looking. For. <laughs> he got played. Uh. <laughs> Okay. We could have made a better Dungeons and Dragons movie. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> They're supposed to be making a new one, I've, right? I've heard that, yeah. This yeah. this is the writer's room. Um, Are they taking it seriously? or? It's super serious. <laughs> I have no idea. I, have no idea. <laughs> I question that. <laughs> um, I'll close that. Here we go. All right, here we go. All right. Okay, gang. You hope they don't make them. They don't take it serious. Unicron. Unicron. Yeah, Unicron's in chat. All right. Oh, is it really? Oh. I. I mean, I kind of hope they'll do it sort of tongue in cheek, a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. What the Chris? The Chris Pine movie. Oh, is Chris Pine in it? Isn't Chris Pine in it? I thought, or it's, is it the other Chris? Uh, you may be right. Lots of Chris's. A lot of Chris's these days. Golly, I wish this. Dungeons and Dragons 22, 2022. Starring Chris Pine. I want to be a part of that. Or at least he's mentioned in the cast. Hugh Grant is also mentioned in the cast. What? What? <laughs> Huge Grant? What? Who is, who is Hugh Grant? Who is Hugh Grant? No, no. Who was Hugh Grant? <laughs> no, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no, um, there's no characters listed. But... Did you know that his middle name is Mungo? Hugh Mungo Grant. Hugh Mungo Grant. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. That was, that. <laughs> wow. That <was> not... <laughs> That's outrageous. Well, this is what Wikipedia says. <laughs> That's a fact, man. Thank you, Mungo Grant. Mungo Grant. <laughs> Incredible. All right. All right. How's it? I'm going to go ahead and delete that from my memory. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Finally got that to work. 
Okay, gang, welcome to the Axe and Arcana fantasy adventure game. Uh, whence last we left off, uh, our heroes were in disguise in the city streets of Ambrosia, uh, a land where magic is outlawed, and our heroes are wanted for aiding a wizard named Barris. Um, you befriended a couple of vigilantes known as the Sisterhood of the Twin Arrow. And um, last time we were here, you guys were discussing what you wanted to do while in the city. Um, some of you wanted to track down the leader of the city guard, Drake Dragonstorm, uh, the person who founded the Cult of Whispers that helped bring William Wisp back. Um, some of you wanted to go to the Frothing Otter uh, a yep. tavern, which we visited earlier in our campaign, uh, and is in the part of town where the Axe Narcana Tavern is, where the rest of our party wanted to visit. So, uh, we are going to generally start off where we start where we left off, um, with you guys sort of making your way to the southeast part of the city. Um, and you guys all had different wants and needs, so tell me how you're going to go by. Uh, like somebody wanted to track down Drake Dragonstorm. Tell me how you wanted to do that. Take it away, anybody. Mm. <laughs> uh, um, well, first, actually, I have a question. Is there, uh, where is the st stream? Where's the, um, background image for oh, our stream? I'm sorry, Am I just I'm not sorry, seeing it? Um, Wait, the what? I normally share my screen. Um, oh yeah, okay. I was I've been watching. Yeah. So I don't I don't have anything other than the character art and stuff I made. Um, so. Okay, that's cool. I will share it in Discord though. Um, let's see. Hopefully this. Oh, this might make my stuff laggy. Uh, it's all if we're playing theater of the mind today that's cool yeah yeah it's yeah. totally fine totally go to, cool. yeah if you want you can go to the stream and then just see the art that's up there because it has the pertinent characters and right right right, right. Um, cool cool so yeah um who was thinking of doing what um i do not know yet <laughs> well, I I definitely wanted to go to the frothing otter, um, and uh, I mean I don't I don't other than my like normal disguise and whatever I, I you know I've just got that uh, I believe my loot is broken is that right? Loot was broken. Uh, when did it break? Maybe it didn't I break. Did. Oh, my, I did. I tried to play the strings, and they they were cut um, by my by my metal fingers. That's um, uh, so there was a music shop in this little square that you guys were in. Oh, really? Or actually, yeah. Maybe maybe I could try and head there before uh, before. Is it on the way to the frothing it's, water? It's in this. You guys were in this little like square with a water fountain and a bunch of stores. There was a musical shop in this square, so it's not out of your way at all. Uh, wonderful. Well, I'll go there. Uh, while um, dusk is going to go replace his strings, uh, does anybody have anything they would like to do? Uh, spells they want to prepare. Um, Did. Uh, did we ever grab that hat from the last session? You you grabbed the hat from one of the clotheslines, yeah. And what kind of hat was it again? Um, God, I do not remember. You can tell me what kind of hat it was. <laughs> I like to be surprised. Oh, you, um, you like to? Yeah, because if I describe the hat, then it's what I want, right? Like, I don't necessarily want it to be what I sure. want. Sure, okay. Yeah, so. All right. Um, let me think about it, and I'll let you know what kind of hat it is. Yep. All good. All good. Um, well, 
need to need to look for Drake Dragonstorm, but I'm not sure how we should go about that. How do you? F- Maybe we should know, put yourself in Velvet Shoes. You're in the city. You know what would you? What right. would you do? feel like maybe we should go around and ask some people or maybe go to a tavern and, and ask some people but I don't know if that's going to draw like any suspicion that's, towards me that's definitely going to draw suspicion <laughs> without a doubt well then I do not know what I would do why are we going okay so why are we going to the tavern uh, is that for Drake uh, we're going. I'm going to the. I would like to go to the tavern because I'm hoping to track down some information about my long lost mom. Okay. Because she's the mother of Jeff El Jefe Beazel Bose, and uh, I've been looking for her for a while, and I've been like kind of off mission for a little bit, so I'm trying to get back on track. Okay. Uh, and there was another place that we were going. So what the Axe Narcana Tavern, the place where you guys first met with Barris, is on the uh, is on the side yeah. of town where this uh, this tavern is. So you guys were sort of heading generally to the same southeast part of town. Right. right. Well, so it's not confusing, I guess. The Frothing Otter is a is a bar, if you put it that way, and uh, Axe Narcana is a tavern. I don't know if you. Yeah. Want so to the Frothing Otter was was. You know, like in, uh, they a music venue. yeah, food and music and stuff. Ax Narcana was the hero's tower at the basement of which yep. there was uh, a watering hole of sorts. Um, right. Yeah. But it's I'm, yeah, headed, yeah. I'm headed to the frothing otter. Okay. I, I'm gonna hold off on the Ax and Arcana on going there. I would like to. Uh, See what what exactly are the uh, the absentees technically doing right so now? So I know Bada was interested in going to check out the Axe and Arcana, um, yeah. And Waddle is not here as well, so they decided to head in the direction of the Axe and Arcana, um, and they would make contact with you guys again. I think that uh, for for me particularly, I'm fine with going to the frothing and then meeting up with them okay. at the Axe and Arcana, maybe next time. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So, Coming so along we will, with we me, partner. Take... What's that? Coming along with me, partner. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna keep it low and and head over to this here music shop beforehand. Keep it low. Gotcha. <laughs> I know just the thing to keep it low. Uh, All right, I'm a mechanical friend. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So, Velvet, you're gonna. Wait, I gotta get my. Are you gonna stick with uh, this crew? They're gonna head to this music shop and then go check out a tavern. Or did you? Yeah, go? I'll I'll stick with the crew. Okay. That's good. Okay. Um. So you guys walk over to this uh, instrument shop. Uh, there's all sorts of woodwinds and string instruments, percussions hanging on the wall. And the shopkeep uh, welcomes Dusk in. Oh, hi! Come on in, come on in. Um, so Dusk makes his way in. Um, Velvet, will you make me a perception check? Okay. Oh, I rolled a 20. Ooh, wee. Nice. Wee. Wee, wee. Wee, wee. Um,. So as you guys are kind of turning the corner, um, you you hear two people who are kind of standing outside just around the corner, kind of chatting with each other. And they're like, uh, yeah, word is his son's back in town. He's looking for his son. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big bucks if anybody can bring him into the boss himself. Who hears that? Just Velvet? Velvet. Velvet heard that, yeah. Gus, what are you up yeah. to? I'm sorry. Gus, what are you... Uh... <laughs> uh, it's cool. I didn't want to interrupt. It's funny because last time I, you, y'all mentioned, like, oh, I'm probably just taking a nap under uh, Bato's helmet or yeah. something. Um, I figured, do y'all still have a bag of holding that you found me in originally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I pictured it, like, right now, that's where I actually was, like, as Bato is 
waddle up going towards the action arcana, I kind of just like hot, like fall out of the bag. Yeah. <laughs> like where I am. Because <laughs> I just like fell asleep and woke up somewhere else. Um, but I just kind of see the other guys going the other direction and I kind of pick up my little backpack and I kind of walk back to them. So I'm just following Velvet right now. All right, so Velvet, you hear this sentence being spoke, and then as that sentence is ending, you feel Gus kind of bump into the back of your leg. Yeah. <laughs> and then the oh, guy. There you are, little. The guys yeah, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> they see this little jostle and they stop talking. <laughs> oh, well, there, there you are. Where, where have you been, little guy? Kind of forgot you, you were missing for a second. Lost, lost my backpack. Another backpack. Too big, too many backpacks. I had to find it very important. Yeah, too many backpacks can be a problem. I'm now wearing like what appears to be like a kid's backpack. It's got little patches on it that says like Junior Ranger Scout. And, like one has like a little <laughs> owl bear or cartoon that says "Don't start fires" and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and I have my little hood pulled up, and I just got bumped into. It's like yeah, where where are we? It was it was much darker a second ago when I first went in the bag. <laughs> um, I feel like I missed something. I heard lots of shouting of Zazu or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about Zazu. Oh, so he was flying off, being chased by the guard, huh? Yep. <laughs> All right. Good call. Good call. Oh uh, yeah. Um. That's right. I. I... <laughs> kind of remember it's been a long couple of weeks <laughs> yeah. i also picture if we're going to this shop that maybe velvet tells us to wait outside because last time i stole things <laughs> we're all here as a group right yeah yeah uh i would like to walk over <laughs> and peruse uh peruse their wares uh all right so you walk over and you're in the pan flute section all right. Uh, this one's got three pipes. That one's got four pipes. The new one that just came in has got five pipes on it. <clears throat> That's a lot of pipes. All right. Uh, I will. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try one out. Uh, so, uh, do you blow? <laughs> How do you produce air? Uh, that's a good question. Let's just say. Let's just um say that I have like a tube that comes out like a like a vacuum cleaner. Except, say that. Yeah. Maybe it's got one of those things. Your, you like, motor at your fan exhaust or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's it go? Woo woo. Uh, <laughs> it's just a steady woo. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect pitches every time. <laughs> All right. Well, um, the shop. Um, the shop keeps like trying to talk over it. He's s- trying to sell Bard on these strings. <laughs> these are the best we've got. <laughs> you hear me talking? Like, this is a really great instrument. <laughs> While I'm playing it, <laughs> Gus and Velvet outside. You hear this like pitched harmony coming <laughs> from inside. Um, <laughs> people walking by in the street <laughs> like turn their heads towards the shop to see what this shrill noise is. Very nice. <laughs> okay, I'll put it. I'll put it down. I'll put. I'll put it. Down. Um, Dusk. So you're seeing a nice selection of strings. Um, and this set he just got in, they can be. Uh, they come in a variety of colors. It's the newest, newest, hottest trend in bard bardic technology. Dude. Oh wow. <laughs> uh, those those those. Uh strings you got there mighty mighty colorful uh yeah pick a pick a color and uh you know they they say the spime sings to you if you if you make a pitch in the correct color oh well uh let's go with the uh with those you know those kind of lavendery purple ones very good choice very good choice so he goes and grabs a set of these strings and starts like hand pulling and wrapping them for you and packaging them up. Um, taking very. And I say, hang on a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, sir. Yeah. I'll just take those dark, dark black ones, actually. Oh, those? <laughs> oh no, you don't want those. Those are, those are too dark. Those are too heavy. <laughs> uh, 
think them's the strings I want. I mean, these are these are professional grade strings. I you need to understand. I'm not liable for. Well, what makes you think I ain't a professional? Oh, it's just my job to let you know. I you know liability you my and loot, all that. My loot is nice and worn in. I mean, there's even a battle axe attached to it. <laughs> that is pretty heavy. <laughs> I'll take the black string. So he like, as it as you as you will, sir. And he starts to undo the strings he was doing, and like, looks almost afraid to approach those black strings. And he grabs them real quick and like wraps them. He kind of takes a deep sigh. Um, he kind of looks over at his partner across the the way, and they both kind of like make eye contact for a second. And then he puts them on the table in front of you and asks you for uh, five gold. I uh, pony up. Thank you, Godspeed. Um, try to tune it on a full moon is all I'm going to say. Uh, will, will do, partner. Thank you. You happen to have a lunar calendar around? <laughs> Was this a calendar shop? No, it's a music shop. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, you see my edge, my, my friend. Uh, I want to say, I would say, calm down as I uh, accidentally break one of the instruments <laughs> with my robotic strength. Um, you oh, break gee. an instrument? <laughs> yeah, like I'm like I picked up like a like a mandolin. And like I just snapped the the neck off of it on accident, oh, as God. I said that. <laughs> um. So he looks towards you, sort of aggravated a little bit, and then he starts to look past you, um, as you guys hear like a little bit of a not a kerfuffle, but like the people in the street start to animate, start chattering, talking about something. Okay. Um, Gus and Velvet, were you guys still outside? Did you step inside? Uh, I think we're still outside. Yeah, I pictured myself outside. Um, so you notice the crowds outside sort of start to clump, uh, sort of like move out of the way as if somebody's coming through. And you hear people saying, it's Captain Dragonstorm, keep your eyes down. Captain Dragonstorm. Everybody starts to, like, shy their eyes away and start to look busy as you you see the the dragonborn figure start to move his way through the crowd not near you sort of on the other side sort of passing by parallel to you guys right i i kind of i kind of sort of like pull pull my cloak tight and kind of tilt my my wizard hat down and myself ridiculous but um Definitely, I, I recognize him, and I, I put my laser focused vision on him, watching him, watching where he's going, what he's doing. Um, so it looks like he's passing sort of from north to south uh, down the street. Um, he doesn't really seem to be looking around. Um, he's, he seems to be used to people stepping out of his way and giving him birth as he walks. Um, so he, he's walking somewhere with intent for sure. Um, and you're able to see the direction he's going. Um, like I said, nobody's making eye contact with him. Everybody's sort of keeping their head down and shuffling back about their business. Um, it seems like nobody wants to catch his eye or, or his eye, you know? Right. Um, I would like, I would like to follow him. I just, I just want to keep. I want to keep a distance so he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't see me or recognize me. I'd like to. I like to follow him if he's if he's leaving. If he's walking away. Alrighty. So you would like to start walking away, um, Gus. You notice Velvet starting to step away from the where the rest of your party is. Um. Yeah. I'm not sure like what he's doing, but I'm gonna stick with him. I'm gonna kind of do what he does, like kind of mimic, like pulling up my hood a little bit, waddle after him. <laughs> Guys inside the store, um, 
you your eyes sort of matched the shopkeep's eyes as he looked out into the crowd and you notice velvet starting to walk off into the crowd <clears throat> does he look like oh. he's following he he looks like he's 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 walking with a purpose May, maybe you know <laughs> yes <laughs> where tarnation is velvet off to i gotta get to the frothing otter boys hmm all right i'm gonna drop the, the mandolin and start walking out <laughs> hey you broke that <laughs> It's like a loud, like, twang as it hits the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he cracked it, boing, and then bang. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, Fine instrument, sir. Fine instrument. <laughs> so you guys step out into the streets. You hear him say, I can't believe you bought those strings. Um, you see Velvet starting to make his way into the crowd with Gus sort of following at the back of his feet. Do you want to follow them? Do you want to head towards... The frothing otter. What are you asking? You see Velvet making his way what looks like in the direction of where you see Drake Dragonstorm's head sort of making his way through yeah. the crowd. So making chase, and then Gus is behind him. Do you want to follow your compatriots, or do you want to continue to the frothing otter? Uh... I'm going to give him a, a big scowl, but I'm going to head to the Frothing Otter. Ooh. ID 10T. Uh, I'm going to say Consarnet. Is he the only one heading to the Frothing Otter? Uh, I think so. Then I will accompany him, because we cannot be alone. It is a dangerous world. And I want to drink some interesting beverages. <laughs> They'll be fun. Uh, alrighty. Um, Velvet and Gus, will you guys make me stealth checks? Yes. No. 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 <laughs> I got oh, a yeah. 10. I rolled a 16 and I have a plus 4 stealth, which gives me a 20 again. Nice. Alright, so you guys start to dip into the crowd and after you know 20 30 seconds you realize you've stepped away from the rest of your party and you're just sort of in this crowd um velvet how far back are you keeping from drake as you're sort of tracking him um i'm i'm keeping like a good i would say 60 to 70 feet away okay Alrighty. I mean, he, he kind of stands out, so it's not too hard to keep track of him. Yeah. But I'm, I'm keeping some distance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so every once in a while, he'll stop. You'll see a couple of the, the thwart hogs, those blue pig people yeah. who are sort of working as the city guard now. He'll stop. He'll see one sort of walking its beat, and he'll stop and talk to it. Um he'll turn around and like get the thwart hogs point of view and you you and gus will duck behind a barrel or a crate to you know, yeah. stay out of his point of view um so he'll talk for a couple minutes and then he'll pat the thwart hog sort of on the back and continue on his way uh up the street um don't forget uh velvet you're wearing one of those speed boots <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So you feel like you're able to jump out of his view like a little quicker because of it. Right. But just with one foot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you thriller slide the other one. <laughs> I'm like I'm like speed walking, but it looks like I'm I'm walking with a limp because <laughs> one foot faster than the other. Yeah. All right. Um. So dusk and ID tend to you sort of uh, took a different path. Uh. To head towards the Frothing Otter Tavern. Um, I, I, I appreciate you coming with me, uh, ID. No problem, comrade. 
We've got each other's backs. I have a back, just like you. <laughs> um, so you guys kind of turn a street corner. Everything's going okay. You turn a street corner and you see two of the city thwart hogs sort of walk in your direction. And um, they kind of look at you. Uh, we rolled disguise checks last time, right? I don't... Uh, yeah. Uh, sure. Let's, is, um, there, is there a newspaper? Yeah, we, we, grab those, we grab those yeah. clothes off the uh, the clothes oh, the that's right. wire. That is correct. Um, I would like you to make, at advantage because you're in those clothes, um, a deception check. Uh, okay. Both All right. Those. You're not going to like it, though. But you roll at advantage, so you roll it twice oh. and then take it because you're wearing other clothes. Oh, okay. One of you is well, wearing a, a nice hat, too. Yeah. <laughs> so I got a 19. All right. Uh, I got a 15 and a 14. All right. Oh, plus five, though. Hang on. So I got a 19 and a 20. So these hogs start to get up close to you. You know, they're sort of walking in the opposite direction of you. And there's that second, the camera, the shutter speed slows down. And they kind of walk by you slowly as they eyeball you up and down. And they don't see anything day. conspicuous about you. They see your legs and they're like, mm. he's, he's he's a human. <laughs> so as far as as far as anybody knows, they don't know that like my my, my that I have like a southern accent now, right? Like, I don't, nobody knows that. Like that's not everyone thinks that I'm still myself, right? People have an idea of what you look for because your dad's so famous. Um, like the other guys wouldn't have like their faces have been seen, but like you were so you would have been a known entity. Um, they may not know what your voice sounds like, and you've you know changed clothes, but your yeah. face is still your face. All right. I mean, I'm still not going to say anything. Yes. Yeah. Um, but they it, sort of walk. What? Oh, yeah. what? Oh, I was just. I he said I'm not going to say anything, but I was thinking like. <laughs> I got a really good disguise. I'm just going to say good day to him. <laughs> so. No, I'll just uh, I'll just continue on. All right. So you don't say anything. Yep. I might wave. That's tip about it. I tip my hat. There you go. <laughs> Classy. Um, so you walk by they do, they don't seem to to recognize you at all. Um that was a close one. We're practically invisible. <laughs> we can do anything we want. <laughs> the power. Ah, I'm going to like grab something random from the side of the road. What are you going to grab? Something random. I'm not looking when I grab it. Like from, <laughs> from a vendor? Uh, Sure, if there's a vendor close by. So you're just going to reach out and grab something. Yeah, real quick. And, the and I'll... I'll Gonna roll me a sleight of hand check on that. Yeah, roll me a sleight of hand. Oh, an eighteen. An eighteen. Ah, nice. All right. Um, Hacha. So you flip and get away with it. <laughs> uh, you grab a scarf. Oh, nice! I'm gonna wear it. It wasn't. It wasn't something that was being sold. It was on the vendor. <laughs> It says Diane scarves. Visit our our start our stall. Nice. My costume is coming together. <laughs> Slowly perfecting my uh my <laughs> <You're> second identity. <laughs> oh god. All right. Um Velvet and Gus, um you guys continue sort of staying behind in the crowd, Drake Dragon Storm. Um the parts of town start to change. You start to notice the um, the architectures of different um, ancestral cultures and different parts of town sort of spring up. Um, different, like the stoneways are a little different. Um, so you track them for a good 30, 40 minutes. What, did you have a question? No, 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 go ahead. Uh, I, I went 
the Gus is whenever we have a stop we will tag him and kind of target Velvet Dick. Why why are we following big scale man? Um don't you know what? Don't don't worry about that right now. Just just be close to me. We just need to keep an eye on this guy. Okay. There there you go, and I give him a a, a little pat on the head. <laughs> and, and a little piece of candy from my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even take the wrapper out. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. ID, Tenti, and Dusk, you guys make pretty good time and find yourselves at the Frothing Otter Tavern. Um... I'm gonna, gonna go, I'm gonna go around back to the uh, to the uh, the workers' entrance. What is uh, from a glance at the entrance? What's the population density inside of the uh, structure? Um, there's like fifty people inside. Oof. Uh, okay. Why? Uh, no, no reason. Um, no reason at all. <laughs> There's a, uh, I don't want to say a bouncer, but there's sort of somebody standing at the door to um, kind of work in the door, you know. Uh, and Dusk went to the back yeah. work I'm gonna, area. Yeah, I'm going to keep my hood up and just kind of go to the back entrance. The uh, would you like me to cause a distraction? Oh. Um... Oh. And I'll whisper that on the way, on right as we get up to the to the tent. Uh, you know what? That would be mighty helpful right now. And I, I didn't right. even think about it. I was just gonna, I was just gonna go on in there, and here you are, using that enormous brain of yours. Uh, so, it's, uh, it's an intel. No. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going to uh, go up to the uh, bouncer, uh -huh. and I'm going to attempt to woo the bouncer. All right, <laughs> my persona is uh, uh, Maggie Flower Bottom. That's going to be my my identity. Okay, so you're going to attempt to woo the doorkeeper, and then <laughs> dusk. You're going to walk around back to the the workers entrance. Yeah, I can use stealth. I can do a stealth check if you want, or I can, I can, I can do whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna try and basically just keep my keep my hood up, and like put my you know show my loot like I'm maybe uh uh like my loot's on my back like I'm getting ready to play okay um, you know on stage okay but I'm gonna keep my hood up and and my hat on and everything and just kind of okay sounds good. Um, kind of try to, try to stealth on ID ten. I'll, I'll keep an eye, kind of, if I can, on, on, to make sure. Like, I don't know. He, he probably he'll probably go out of sight. You're actually, all good. But, you're all good. Make yeah. me make me the deception check as you walk up and try to charm the doorkeeper. All right. I'm gonna do it extremely aggressively. All right. Okay. All right. Like fall into his arms. Okay. Uh, I rolled a eight. An eight on that one. Yep. And you fall into his arms. Yeah, I'm gonna kind of trip on Are my you extremely heavy. Trip on my don't don't worry about it. Trip, <laughs> I'm gonna trip on my legs, my my metal legs, and fall into his arms, and go, oh, oh dear me, I seem to have lost my balance. So you you trip and fall into the half work guard's yeah, should, arms. Yeah, okay. Um, so he's like, what the hell? While this is going on, Dusk slinks around back and finds his way to the employee back entrance smoke door, you know, whatever. Okay. Yeah. The half orc like writes ID Tenty and he's like, No worries, no worries, you okay? Are you alright? Uh and uh I'm I'm not even gonna do the female voice, I'm just gonna drop it. I'm just gonna be like, Oh, thank you. You are such a big brave man. You have <laughs> You have stopped me from breaking my chassis. I mean, human body. <laughs> you are handsome. 
I am wooing you now. <laughs> Do you want to make like a charisma check for me? Uh, what do you are, yeah. you are you are you what are you what are you trying to glean from this? Don't worry, I have a backup plan. Um, <laughs> What's the first plan? <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to uh, get him to pay all of the attention to me and not worry about anything, maybe like loud noises or anything that might might occur. All right, uh, in the inside. back alley. All right. Yeah, or inside. Yeah. All right. Uh, you wanted a charisma check? Yeah, please. Okay, that's gonna be oh okay well, uh that's gonna be a five. Okay, um, yeah. dusk. So you kind of find your way around to the back entrance. It's it's little hustling bustling as people are coming out to take out the trash. Um, you see like an employee look at you. Um, dump some water buckets out and then head back in. Uh, it seems like you very easily can just walk on in. <laughs> did was there um did we establish a name for the the management of the frothing otter no i don't think no. so all right well, i'm gonna look for somebody so um, the door flies open and you see the employee who was just there and he's like there he is boss and this guy's manager seems to come over and he's like there you are you're five minutes late we need to get you up on the stage now Oh boy, uh, wh whatever y'all need. Uh, so he like hurries you into the back entrance and shows you to a green room where you can real quickly string up your guitar with your new black strings. I ID Denty, you you're trying to charm the guard. Yeah, and he's like, look, I don't. Entries five gold. Entries five gold. You can't sweet talk me out of it. And then you see him stiffen like a board and start to salute. Okay. And he's like uh -oh. behind you. And you kind of okay. turn around and you see the figure Drake Dragonstorm walking towards you. And he's like, Captain Dragonstorm? And you notice, similar to on the streets earlier, people sort of keeping their heads down and making a way. Um, and the captain of the city guard, Drake Dragonstorm, walks right by you, ID-10-T. Okay. And enters into the frothing otter. Uh, Gus and Velvet, you guys tracking Drake Dragonstorm, see you've gotten to a part of town where he makes his way and enters a tavern. And as he kind of, like, walks into the door, you see your warforged friend with a newly acquired scarf <laughs> talking to the guard outside. <laughs> uh, we'll go figure. There they are, right there. Uh, I guess let's, let's go. Let's get inside. I want to see what's going on. <laughs> he's kind of dragging me along, and I'm kind of staring at ID10. He's like, why is Dude. Bucket from Train here? <laughs> do, <laughs> <laughs> do I see them? Do I, do I see them? Um, make me perception Before check. Me. Make me right. perception check. Uh, that's going to be perception. Where are you at? Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, you see Gus. You don't see Velvet. You see. You look and you hear somebody say, "Bucket man from train." <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I recognize him, right? Yeah. Okay. So if I see him, uh, I'm going to. Uh, are they moving towards the door? I imagine they Something were. Like they were sort of like stopped as they were watching Drake okay. enter. Uh, so I'm going to. I'm gonna like kind of flail my arms and pretend to trip again on him on the on the the bouncer. Uh -huh. <laughs> and and as I trip on him, my noodle arms will go over his shoulders, and then my hand will kind of motion them to go inside. <laughs> And I'd be like, oh, dear me, I just can't get anything right today. And just fall <laughs> over. All right. So you guys see ID10T and the guys start to fall over on the guard. His noodly hands, like, point at you to, like, slink in. Uh, Velvet mm -hmm. and Gus. Yes. And, and we slink. Slink away. We go. <laughs> um. Slink. 
blink right past all the people. Yeah, as I slip by, uh, I need Tinty kind of now and just struggling guards on, I kind of just like touch the tips of the scarf, like, ooh, nice. <laughs> no touching. <laughs> Velvet, you're able to, like, duck and weave really quickly with that one magic boot on. Um, okay. And deftly, like, make your way in into this tavern. Tavern seems pretty lively. There's a lot of people there. Um, Dusk, you get your instrument restrung. Uh, the manager pops in. He's like, oh, what would you say your name was again? Uh, the name's... Uh... Do you not know your name? Void. Uh, sorry, man. The name's Void Windmill. Void Windmill. <laughs> All right. Well, a little too much of that Black Lotus the last night. Uh. <laughs> um. So he goes out. Uh, Velvet and Gus, you guys sort of sneak in. You see um, there's a musician on the stage just finishing a set of spoon poetry. They were like banging wooden spoons together, telling beat poetry. Um, your <laughs> eyes sort of scan the room and you see in the corner, sitting down, Drake Dragonstorm, the guy you've been tracking and sort of keeping away from. You notice he's tucking into a booth with Kyrus, the, your friend who escaped the train that was tracking you in Krotara. Your friend with the eye patch, who took off. The city guard was after. And yeah. on the other, I get excited about that because I actually recognize him from the train, like tugging on Bell's like, Oh, man, you are going to eat. And then anybody in the audience who'd recognize next to him is Saja Flame, the uh, woman burned in the fire, started in the second episode where, what, uh, Velvet's brother died. Um, so it's like a reunion of the Cult of Whispers that sort of helped. Oh, you guys may have recognized her from the outdoor William Wisp Temple when there was the little ritual and you guys got teleported back in time. Yeah, yeah describe the second person to me. You, you broke out for a second. Tell me, tell me again who the second person is, is there. Kyrus, the one-eyed guy from the train. You guys found him in his underwear in the first season. Uh no, 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 not, not Kyrus, the person after that. So, Saja. She was Saja. she was sort of the rival to the other party. They chased her mm -hmm. through a city, trapped her in a sewer. She teleported out where you guys were part of the ritual. Say her, say her name one more time. S-A-J-A. -A. Okay. So, she's on the screen there. She's wearing, like, a, a half mask over her burns, like a copper mask. Okay. Um, so you guys recognize these people that you're sort of staying away from. Um, ID 10T, the guard straightens you back up and he's like, all right, enough of that. Enough of that. Just go in. Just go in. I won't charge you. Just don't fall right. on me again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, big boy. I'm on my way in. No, kind of shimmy into the into the door. So you kind of shimmy in behind uh, Velvet and Gus. Um, you guys see a table sort of on the far end from the stage that you're able to take, I don't know, take refuge in. You can take a seat. There's a small back table for you guys. Well, I'll probably just sit down. It'll be fun. Um, Gus, you've never been in a tavern before, so you see all yeah. sorts of different creatures different races, different classes, drinking all sorts of different frothing beverages and bubbling beverages. Um, it seems to be like a theme here. Um, you see mounds of different roasted animals and, and fruits you've never seen before and vegetables. Um, all sorts of different smells that your little nose has never partaken in. Um, they get you a little booster seat for your table. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a bit overwhelmed. I imagine at first I don't even sit on the chair. I kind of go under the table like that's where I'm supposed to go and kind of hide. Um, until Velvet kind of points me to the, to the little booster seat. <laughs> I'm like clutching my backpack really close. Oh, it's so little nervous. Uh, wait, waiter comes up to you. 
What are you having? What are you having? I'll just, I'll, I'll just have an ale, please. Nail. <laughs> <Nail. Oil. laughs> for the for the child. Um, <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I'm a Shirley Temple ale. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say I kind of look at him and I point at like a really big roast like piece of meat on the other table too. <laughs> oh, you want a leg of rat, hun? Like a rat. Hold, all right, all right. ID ten T. So she, wait, points to you. What are you having? I, uh, some of your finest. Hey, Definitely man. not oil of any kind. I don't drink oil. I'm not a machine. We have oil. If you want oil, no big deal. Uh, okay. Your finest synthetic oil, please. All right, we got one Dwayle, one Shirley Temple, one Lego Rat, and one Oil coming up. Uh, and so she goes off uh, with your order. Dusk, or I'm sorry, Void, the manager comes in and says, Are you ready? It's about time to go on. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I just have a quick question uh, b- before I go on. Is, is, is Deborah still work here? Deborah? Uh, hasn't been a Deborah here in six months. Why do you ask? Uh, well, I mean, Deborah just knew. I, listen, I played here a long time ago. Deborah just knew a person I'm, I'm, I'm looking for. I was trying to talk to her if I could. I think I could put you in touch with someone who might be in contact with Deborah. But is now the time for this? Uh. When, 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 what other time is there? It's performance time, son. It's time to get out there. And then you hear out on the stage, everybody who's in the audience, uh, uh, like the MC sort of comes up and they're like, all right, let's hear it for Orlada and the Spoon Jams. That was great. Uh, I've been your host, Valen. We appreciate you uh, leaving extra gold to your staff tonight next up we have the music stylings of void windmill come on out void some people right. clap a lot of people don't really pay attention void you hear your name great uh i'm gonna head on out there and begin uh twanging on my uh my new black string loop velvet and, gus um, and id you see dusk step out on the stage where Void windmill was announced. And uh, I'm going to throw, you know, I've still got my, as much of my disguise on as possible. But um, I'm going to sing a verse from Unforgiven 2 by Metallica. (laughs) Just don't get my stream copyrighted. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So that's the song I sing. Um... It's you know, it, it sounds a lot like "Unforgiven" too by Metallica. Uh, uh, I think you can say the lyrics; you just can't play the music. I think I can, yeah, I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing the lyrics, so I'm gonna sing at least this part. Um, uh, so it just you know, bang, 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 so I'm start twanging on it and lay beside me under an evil sky. In darkest day, in blackest night, we are both paralyzed. The door is open, but there's no sun at all. A black heart scarring darker steel, but there's no sun at all. No, I don't see the sun at all. And that's what I see. Um... So as Dusk was singing the song, Dusk, you start to feel the pulse of your patron, your patrons start to like flow through those strings, right? Mm. You like, you feel energized in a way you haven't in a while. And you feel like a couple people in the front row like are really affixed to your song. And then as soon as you stop, they kind of like shake out of it and start clapping. Right. Um, gang. Uh, your round of drinks comes out as Dusk is singing the song. Um, 
Were, were there any uh, bardic magic effects to that desk, or were you just just performing a song? Uh, I was. Let's see, what song was I singing? Uh, I guess I could have been singing Charm Person, sort of, kind of, but um, I don't know if that works on, like, a group of people. Th think about it for a minute. I'll uh, return to the group, and then I'll, I'll come back to you. Um, okay. So, gang, your drinks are sat down in front of you. Gus uh, roasted leg of rat. A plate of it with a nice, fresh green garnish on the side is placed in front of you. As uh, the first song ends, what are you guys doing? I kind of just like, that guy looks a lot like Dusk. <laughs> I uh, say down the hatch and uh, open my hatch up and chuck the uh, oil in. <laughs> and say, uh, that's because it is Dusk. <laughs> <laughs> And, and then I take my L and I, I take a slurp from it and then I do a dramatic spit bait. I go, <laughs> One more, sir. <laughs> um, so you guys notice Drake, Dragonstorm, Saja, and Kyrus are like very deep into conversation. They're not paying attention to anybody else. Um, you know, just really intense in into cat like sort of like grabbing each other's arms and like shaking each other's hands and like yeah are they plotting does it look like they're plotting uh you can make me an insight check all right oh um four <laughs> Uh, you're really not sure what they're doing. Maybe they're having a birthday party. Maybe they're. <laughs> I, just, I'll, I, I just order order another oil. Order another oil. Uh, Are we paying for these as we order them, or no? They're running up a, a tab. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um. Um. Can I can I do a captain check anyway? I closer to the table to listen to what they were saying about being spotted? Or... Can you do a what? I'm sorry, you're, you're breaking up a I little bit. Uh, I was thinking of a, per a perception check. Like, is there, is there, like, I don't know, a table I can cl crawl underneath and, and eavesdrop n near them? Will they see that? You want to get closer to them to try to listen? I do. Um... So there's like um you can make your way past their table and make a perception check to listen as you go by. You can try to stealth okay. and like hide under tables. Um okay. magic is illegal, but if you've got some sort of magical means to figure it out, you can do that as well. I'll be right back real quick. All right, but okay. um I I um, maybe help with this. You think you can help me, little buddy, little guy? Is the first off? Is the room kind of like a like you know we took your bar like kind of smoky, and, like hazy and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, me can turn you into gas, and you can fly by. <laughs> you can turn me into gas. I get all excited, like shaking my head. <laughs> I don't know if I'm comfortable with that plan. <laughs> this option, never tried it on somebody else, but done it myself. Can you can you turn yourself into gas? I'm gonna shake my head kind of excitedly. <laughs> okay, um do you, do you wanna do that, little buddy? Do you think you can go over there and be gas? <laughs> be gas. <laughs> be gas. Yeah, so I can cast gaseous form, and uh, it doesn't say how long. Just it ends if the creature dies, pretty much. But uh, does it yeah, say concentration? It like um, it doesn't say on this. I think gaseous form has concentration. I'm not okay, sure. I'm pretty cool. sure. Yeah, Here, I'll so look it I, up. I could turn myself into gas and float over the. Room. Yeah, yeah. Okay, concentration up to an hour. Okay, so he's good. Yeah, yeah. Um. 
But you do know that magic is technically illegal. Yeah. So you got to just do it out of sight or... Yeah. yeah, I'm going to try. I could go like under the table. You <laughs> are you are very small. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Gus is going to go under the table and cast gaseous form on himself. Yeah. Did, I imagine did, like I, a did I make like... I'm oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was, I was going to ask, should I make like maybe like a fart sound with my hands and like <laughs> act like a rip big one? Yeah, just cough really loud or something. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay, I'll do that. Velvet, did we say you took, like, um, there was a way you could talk telepathically? Do you remember? Yeah, that sounds familiar. Okay. I was, I was trying to remember. Huh? Yeah, go ahead. You pick a creature. Last episode, last episode, I think Bado communicated. Oh, it was Bado. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. I don't think it was me. <laughs> okay. So, so just that, FYI, yeah. um, while he's in the gaseous form, he has a flying speed of 10 feet, okay. and he can enter and occupy the space of another creature. Okay. Yeah. How are you going to describe it, Gus? Oh, just like, I just imagine, like, he goes on the table, and it's really dark, and you just see, like, this kind of, like, poof, like a, like a poof of smoke but you don't see anything that caused it, just kind of come up around under the table and kind of go up to being like maybe 10 feet above uh, the floor, sort of in the air. Yeah, so you rise up and there's different like pipe smokes. There's like smoke coming in from the kitchen where they're mm -hmm. roasting all the meats. So it's a nice like aromatic mix up here. Yeah. So you kind of float up to the top and start to hover your way above Dusk, uh, Drake Dragonstorm's table as Dusk is about to start his second song. Oh I'm God. sorry, Void Windmill. <laughs> void Windmill. Um, uh, any requests, ladies and gentlemen? Play Wonderwall. I don't, I don't know that song. <laughs> you know Wonderwall. Yeah, play Wonderwall. Uh, Play it. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to do Wonderwall for y'all. Um, uh, all right. Dum dum dang dick a ching ching mick a bang ching mick a bang ching. Today is possibly the day that they're going to put it back on you. But now you should have somehow realized that you probably not got to do. <laughs> Don't believe nobody tells me the way I feel about me now. Uh, and all the roads I walk are very <laughs> winding. Uh, and every light I look in is super blinding. There's so many things I cannot say now to you. Because I don't speak the same language. Uh, because maybe <laughs> you're gonna be the one who kills me. And darker, before like it. it all, uh, you're my wonder. All. And that's it. Thank you. So you notice the same couple people. Like, there's, like, four people now in the front, too. When you start playing, they start, like, getting really fixed on you. And when you're done, they, like, start clapping, like, really feverishly. Like, oh, my God. This guy's great. It's fantastic. Woo! Gus, you are above Drake Dragonstorm's table. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what can, I, what can I see in here? So you see the characters up on the screen, Drake Dragonstorm, Kyrus, and Saja, all catching up. Um, so Drake goes, wait. Uh, Kyrus goes, let, let me tell you from the beginning one more time how it all went down, okay? We successfully split up Barris' friends, right? Uh, we pulled the ritual off, but... You guys accidentally sent me back to Krotara too. 
It's fine, I survived, I gave him a little shit, and I made it back here. And it looks like our plan worked. William Wisp has returned. We don't have to worry about that Barris anymore either. Drake's like nodding and he starts talking and uh, he's got a lower voice. Um, I have ascended to Capitol Guard. This, the power in the city is mine, my friends. We've got what we've wanted this whole time. Saja, the, she's got the burns um, and that copper mask. And she's just kind of sitting quietly, like contemplating everything that's being said right now. Um. Uh, is Kaja the one that we almost killed? Saja, yeah. Is it Saja? Yeah, you guys saw her. Zothok, Patrick's old character, threw a flaming spear into somebody, or threw a spear into somebody and pinned him to a flaming ladder. Mm -hmm. That was Velvet's that, brother. Yeah. That was Velvet's brother. Oh, sorry. <laughs> He was he was friends with Saja. She got burned in that incident and had been kind of like, you guys chased her through the city, um, yeah. Before you went to space. Um. So, Drake Dragonstorm goes. So tell me again what what these friends of Barris looked like. Kyrus is like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a there's the elephant one. There's the Wark one on the wheels. There's a... Oh boy, there was a dwarf. There's an orc. There's a wizard. There's a, there's a whole mess of them. There's a tiefling. I am fairly certain... I am, He catches himself. I am fairly certain that one of them is Elhef's son himself. Can you believe it? Drake sort of reacts to it like he takes that in and starts processing it um velvet and id tenty what are you guys doing order my fifth pint of oil <laughs> um can we see gus i imagine the the mist cloud he is is tinged similar to his flesh and mushrooms because you know what you're looking for. You can kind of like... I don't know. Maybe there's a shimmer of a smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine if you kept track of it while it was moving. You could tell for it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just sitting there keeping keeping track and just, and just watching. Yeah. I'm just... Yeah. Same thing. But I'm ordering the oils one after the other. Velvet. <laughs> Velvet. You notice that there's a person sort of at a table next to you. And you, they start looking at that magic boot you've got on. They're sort of like making eye contact with it and trying not to be seen staring at it. Um. Um. I kind of, I kind of just, just sort of pull my my cloak down further over my shoe. Um. And and I I point I point. To ID Denti, and I go, look, is, is that person over there offering to uh, share some of their oil drinks with you? You should go over there and say hi. You should introduce yourself. And uh, I will respond with, I'm not drunk. And then I'll <laughs> sit up and walk over to them and start talking. But So you pointed them to the person who was staring at your shoe, Velvet? I pointed at ID Tinty. I just pointed him. And then oh, I point thought you to, pointed to them. I think you're telling. Yeah. No, I was. I, I pointed to to my friend. Okay. So do I know where they are? Are you telling yeah, me to go I, talk? Yeah, I I kind of I kind of I, I I go look at that person over there, and I and I look towards that person, and you see who oh, I'm yeah. looking. Oh yeah. Okay. So then yeah, I get up and I walk over to those people and start talking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to specify about what I start talking about. <laughs> so you roll over. It's it's a pair of um, goblins sort of sitting nice. up at a bar stool. Um, and you roll up and they're like, what the? Hey, what do you want? Uh, hmm. 
What what do I want? <laughs> what does anyone want? Uh I'm just gonna go ahead and uh start talking to them about like some some really inane in-depth kind of subject. Like the the politics of the I don't know. Um the politics of some far off kingdom on uh whether or not they should, you know, plow their fields clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, yeah. something random, something random, and completely it just yeah. He starts to cut you off, and he's like, "Look, I don't give a a damn about that. Where'd your friend get the magic shoe? That's not legal, is it?" And then uh, I'll be like, "Okay, just a second. I got to think about this." All you right. see the you see the the little numbers and things like hovering over my head as I'm thinking. <laughs> Uh, void dusk <laughs> void it's time for your third song you see um id 10 t he sort of like perked up in the back and wheeled over and started talking to a pair of goblins time for song number three okay <clears throat> um i'm gonna lean into the mic again and say um um, mighty kind of your your applause, ladies and gentlemen, for you know, you know critters and cadets. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not taking any more requests. Um, I think it's about time for uh, me to skedaddle after this next song. Um, I just want to thank the. Uh, the manager, and I look over, look over severely at the manager. Um, uh, you know, uh, to kind of like give him a look, like I need, I need, I need his help or I need his information. Oh, um, like, you, like you need his name? Uh, sure. Tamlin. I'd like to thank the management here, Tamlin, and. Uh, and uh you know everybody give it up for them um make be sure to tip your your waitresses and your waiters uh and your bar staff and uh uh you know uh just uh everybody everybody uh have a have a nice evening have a nice day or whatever whatever time it is um it's dusk you kind of twinge at that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nobody. Okay, great. And nobody notices somebody yelling the name Dusk really loud. Great. Um, cool. So uh, this time, uh, like I said, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'd like to like basically get out of this bar because uh -huh. I don't think. I don't think the information is here. Um, so I'm going to play another song, but with kind of like a different kind of intent in, in mind. Um, kind of just like, a, I don't know, like I, I was thinking of like darkness, but I don't know how... I don't think like we necessarily need to cast any kind of like magic. Yeah. Uh, Cause it seems to be these strings are doing something. Uh, quick question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brian, do you remember uh -huh. the potion that I got at the very beginning? Do you remember what that does? Oh, do you remember where we picked it up? In the at the very first like kind of tomb where they did the ritual is that crypt with right? the fake coin? Yeah, yeah. It was it was like in a big pot and I I scooped a big big amount of it out in a jar and kept it. Yeah. Um, golly, I have a vague memory of it. Why? Uh. Well, I was gonna say to the two goblins, I was gonna say, uh. 
How about we how about we have a drinking contest for that magic boot? I bet I could outdrink the both of you. Uh, I've got some of the finest uh, dwale that I, you'd ever seen right here. And I open the hatch, pull out that potion, and slam it down on the thing. It's like, we take turns, and whoever falls over last wins. They kind of look at each other real quick. Um, yeah. So you kind of slam it down as Dusk is going to start this third song. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm ready to go. Do you have a song in mind? Uh, I, yeah, I've got a song in mind. So uh, I'm going to start it, you know. Um, but um, bum, 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 bum. Darkness imprisoning me. All that I see. Absolute horror. I cannot live. I cannot die trapped in myself. I'm a holding cell. Father has taken my sight, taken my speech, taken my mind, taken my arms, taken my legs, left me in life, left me in hell. And that the song ends. It's Dusk, Thank y'all. aka Void, been- Windmill starts playing his second song. Gus, you hear um, Kyrus go. A third song, I'm sorry. Kyrus goes, Oh, there's one more. There's a monk. One of them's a monk. And he starts describing it. And Drake Dragonstorm seems very interested at Kyrus' description of the monk you know as Waddle. Um, And then you get a feeling like the conversation's starting to die down. As they're explain, they're giving pleasantries. They haven't seen each other in six months, eight months. Been some time. And so after like catching up, how's your, yeah. How's your grandma? <laughs> yeah. How's your family? <laughs> um. So. ID ten T three. Oh yeah, go ahead. I was say like as I kind of kind of tell they're not talking about important stuff. I'm kind of starting to drift idly back towards the table. So you sort of re evaporate under the table? Yeah, once I get back there, um, I don't know if it's going to take any time, but yeah, once I get back there, I kind of like sneak back, like sleep against the back wall and kind of come up under the table and then like solidify and, and kind of crawl back up and I imagine like dusting myself off, like I feel weird about mixing all the other smells and stuff like that. <laughs> like, yeah. Kind of coughing out cigarette smoke and stuff, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then your mushroom coughs out cigarette smoke. Oh, yeah, yeah. It also goes... <laughs> <laughs> so, Velvet, uh, Gus sort of re reapparates next to you. Um, as you hear ID10T slam down this potion from his innards. And you hear him talking about a drinking contest. Um, so, the first goblin looks... At the other goblin, and they both nod. He quaffs part of the potion, hands it to the other goblin. He quaffs part of the potion, and hands it to you. Uh, does does it does it do anything? So you see them starting to like, got like a I'll funny a funny bit, taste yeah. in their mouth. Yeah. And the first one who took a swig, like his eyes started to light up. And he belches, and purple flame erupts from his mouth. And starts to, like, you see part of it singe the roof of the tavern above a little bit. As that happens, Drake Dragonstorm, like, pushes the table back and stands up. And you hear him say, unauthorized (laughs) use of magic! And starts to draw his weapon. Everybody starts to shut up and starts to scatter. Um as magic potions are also magic and technically illegal. And Drake Dragonstorm, the head of the city guard, <laughs> starts to walk over towards the two goblins and ID Tenti holding the potion. ID Tenti, what would you like to Wait, do? Wait, I'm holding the potions. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, Dusk, you finished your song as this kerfuffle is starting. Dusk is on the stage. ID Tenti is holding the potion. Gus Did and the, Velvet uh, are at the table yeah. sort of adjacent. Did the uh, potion seem to to hurt them? 
No, it was like when, a potion like of belt. potion of fire breathing. Oh, then I'm downing the whole thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm down the hatch. <laughs> I mean, and I throw it in there, and you hear the glass just yeah, break inside me. It. And I just shut it again. <laughs> We're going full Roger Rabbit here. So Dra Dragon Storm, like, walks up, and he points and goes, You, you, you. What what do you have in your possession? And the second and goblin, I, like, burps fire, yeah. trying not to. And I'll be like, He did it! <laughs> and I'll point over at the other goblin. The um, first one. So as you start to uh, say no, it, no. you feel yeah. fire starting to come up your chassis. Will you make me a constitution saving throw? Oh, okay. Yep. Is it, This isn't a poison, is it? No. Okay. I rolled a 18. So you feel that it's like indigestion, but flaming dragon nice. bile. And you feel it start to come up and you're able to like tamp down your hatch and stop fire from coming up in the way these two goblins did. Okay. Drake. So I just imagine it kind of leaks out like a slight bit, and there's a little bit of smoke coming out of my hinges. Like a really, really spicy belch. <laughs> he pulls out some binders, like handcuffs, and he's like, all right, where did you get it? And they're like, he did it. He gave it to us. And they're, like, pointing at you as Drake's putting them into handcuffs. All right. Um, and so then I will, the, uh, let's, uh, um, velvet yeah. and I'm gonna, Gus and dust. I'm going to quickly, can I quickly interrupt, try and interrupt with like a, an, uh, like an encore? Sure. Would that try and maybe like, uh, tell me about it. Like paint it out for me. So I'm, 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 you know, I'm realizing that my, my playing music has magical <laughs> abilities or powers. I'm wondering if my song lyrics could influence uh, people. I'm, I want to sing Master of Puppets and see <laughs> if uh, that can like control them or I can maybe convince them with my mind or my singing to like let 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 uh, ID10T go. Are you doing well, so you feel like the people you saw in the front row wasn't necessarily like magic magic. Um, it's you they're like admirers of yours it's like magic but it's not really magic you know it's like kara's magic oh okay. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but if you want to play something and attempt to cast a spell to do that we can talk about it mm. uh, velvet and gus do you guys have any thoughts um i'm thinking about just punching a guy near me in the face I'm just gonna punch a guy in the face next to me, just and start a bar fight. Okay. <laughs> roll, roll me d twenty as have, strength you to have, it. You have to say like something though. You have to say like you know like that's my woman or like you lousy <laughs> cheat. That's my purse. <laughs> someone in the face. I don't know you. <laughs> All right, roll me a strength. I don't know you. That's my purse. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll my dice now. Roll it. I rolled an 11. All right. So you yell, that's my, what do you yell? I don't know you. That's my purse. So you yell that and you swing the punch into the waiter that was coming with your next round of oh, drinks. No. You punch, punch her. Oil flies onto a dwarf. It like coats into his beard. And he's like, what the blimey hell? He starts to flip a table. <laughs> Dusky. Can I? Yeah. Uh, uh, quick thinking. Uh, turn the turn one like grab one of the goblins, turn him towards the dwarf who's covered in oil, and like and like hit him on the back or whatever. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Dusk, you were gonna start to play a song. <laughs> uh, James is a rock and roll now. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna play one more song. Yeah, I feel like a bar fight starts to break out. Great. I'm gonna play one last song. Uh, all right, folks, it's getting wild out there. I think I'll just play one more for you. Um, uh, all right, y'all know this one. And uh, I start doing, uh, another, I, you know, twanging on my lute again. And, um, but I'm bum bum master of puppets. I'm pulling your strings. You hear chairs breaking. 
and Glass smashing smashing. your dreams. <laughs> Wanted by me. You can't see a thing. Just call my name and I'll hear you scream. And then as soon as you say scream, the fire comes out of the goblin's mouth. Zaidi Tenti like punched the flaming breath out of the goblin and it catches a spark on the dwarf's oily beard. Oh God. <laughs> oh, Drake God. Dragonstorm has like one goblin under control and this tussle has just started in the bar. Um, so you guys feel like you're able to slink away. Now would be your time. Uh, <clears throat> and just to... I don't know how, how close he is, if he can grapple me or whatever, but I, I was going to say just to be sure that I can slink away, I was going to cast a spell to get away. Would that be fine? Or... Sure. What are you going to cast? Do I need to, is what this question. I was going to cast Misty Step, uh, the teleportation spell that I have. So like I, I basically poof, and then poof somewhere else 30 feet away. So Drake Dragonstorm has the first goblin. He grabs the second goblin and sort of lowers it because you were holding him. And he lowers it, and there's just mist behind it. And, like, he doesn't know where you went. Yeah. As you misstepped out. Um, Velvet and Gus, you saw ID 10 t like, bamf out of there. Uh, Drake Dragonstorm, like, scouring the room, not paying attention to you guys. Yeah, I say we, make, we like, start running to the exit. Uh, at least I do. I, like, kind of grab my backpack, and, like, I'm running and grab, like, another uh, thing of rat meat someone else's plate and uh, and just like him scuttling to the uh to the entrance really like down low yeah you're able to like run through the legs of the chairs and stuff and avoid the stamp and clatter mm -hmm. um velvet what are you up to is this bar of fights erupting i'm, I'm gonna scooch on out scoot scoot uh you guys start to run out as the guard who is outside the bar door guy starts to run in um dusk you like playing the song as the fight's going on and you feel like you see your the rest of your party shimmy shimmy on out um um uh, they, they mean great you know it's like i just kind of thanks everybody that i've been uh i've been void windmill and uh i'll see y'all next time and i just shimmy on out of there before you leave tamwin tamwin goes void and he writes a card down, and he puts a name on it, and he's like, "This might help you find Barbara. Come back, you, come back and play anytime." Your four fans are like, "We love you, Void. We love you, Void." Thank you kindly. Um. So a fight starts. There are numbers of people who are also just trying to get out of this bar where this fight has erupted because they don't want any part of it. Um, so you guys kind of fill out into the city streets of Ambrosia as nighttime is settling. Um, the lanterns and stuff, the warp power generators are starting to fire up as lights are starting to um, emit onto the streets. Um, you get glass breaking inside as this fight uh, is continuing. Um, ID 10T, I imagine you misstepped out into the street, <laughs> out into the outside. Uh, anywhere I can see, so probably near the front entrance, okay. and then I just run out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys escape the the tussle of the frothing otter. Um, what's what's your call? Uh, that went better than first... expected. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the first moment I have, I'll share, I'll share what I heard because they hadn't had a chance to yet. Just that uh, they. They know us. They're looking for us. It was good to finally sing for real on the screen. <laughs> you were you were amazing, by the way. You were just really. If I can take a moment, you were just you were incredible. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Thank you. Um, that's that's it. That's the end of my that, compliment. That, <laughs> no more compliment. Uh, I'll just say, uh, we can hide at the, the Axe and Arcana. Let things die down. I'm That's glad I didn't have to use my backup plan. <laughs> what, what was your backup plan? It involved a fireball. 
<laughs> Damn, I would have loved to see that. I do not kill innocents when I can help it as I walk down the street. Um, Imagine that you say that as you walk down the street in the bar is behind you still on fire. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, uh, as I walk down the street and I grab another random thing. <laughs> um, you guys, as you guys start to leave, like there, it wasn't on fire, but there was like singes on the top pillars. Um, as you're like leaving, Drake Dragonstorm comes out with those two goblins, and they're like, "Where's that son of a bitch? We'll kill him!" <laughs> um, well, this ain't the last he heard of us. Believe you me. And Drake like <laughs> shuffles them uh, away. Velvet, um, when ID10 t mentioned Axe Narcana, you sort of felt like a, a ping or a pulse. Axe Narcana was where Barris was from, where you guys first met up. And it has like a, an arcane aura that you can focus in on. And you feel like you would be able to get your party there in about 20 minutes. Um, like you feel drawn to it. You, you have an arcane connection to it. I, I think going to the Axe Arcana is a great idea. Let me let me lead the way. I'm ready, ready to go, and I, I um pull my pull my robes up and kind of um shake shake my body and like puff my chest out and like mm, gallantly lead the way towards towards the Axe Arcana. So you, you hike your robe up, and you swear you hear that goblin go, No, look, look, he's got magic boots! He's got magic boots! <laughs> and Drake's like, shut up. <laughs> and then I, I speed walk limp away. <laughs> and we'll never see them again. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised it took them this long to get into the game, honestly. Um... <laughs> so you guys make your way through the streets of Ambrosia um, starts to get a little more familiar and then before you know it you're back on the steps of the Axe Narcana Tavern which is sitting at the base of Fellstone Tower where you guys first met Barris um, there's a couple of dent marks in the door you see there's a um, <laughs> Like a blood streak where it looks like somebody was just like skull bashed right there at the doorway. Um, but it looks shuttered and like it hasn't been touched since you guys left. Or since most of you left. <laughs> well, he wants to go in first. Gus, you want to go in first, little guy? <laughs> What is this place? It smells <laughs> funny. It's our, it's our special secret hangout place. You go in there and see if there's anybody inside. I'll give you another piece of candy. Hey, Gus. <laughs> why don't you take this? And I give him my dragon scale shield. <laughs> oh, it's like as big as I am, kind of like holding it up. Like <laughs> with difficulty, kind of walking in there. Like, okay, kind of walking forward into the door he's new. i love i love him i love Gus so much i hope he's okay but i just i love him so much <laughs> the door seems to be locked gus um let's see i kind of like put the shield down and kind of like smelling it looking for uh for uh i don't know some kind of door lock that i can that i can manipulate <laughs> It does not seem to have a mechanical lock. Like I, I, I turned, yeah. yeah, I turned to them like, "How open, stuck." Gus the Druid cannot get into the Wizard's Tower because it is locked. Anybody have any thoughts? Can I do a perception check? Absolutely. Yeah. rolled an 11. So you're kind of looking around and then you hear Zazu! You, uh -oh. you look up and you see your pterodactyl fly 
and land up on an open windowsill up top. Um, ID10T would be the only one to recognize this window as the one that your ship left. You oh, hey. That's where we left from our ship. Zazu! How did he get up there? He flies. Um, <laughs> well, does anyone have any rope? How <laughs> high was it up? Um, six, seven stories. Oh, okay. Uh, we can't throw Gus up there, can we? <laughs> Uh, Even if I, like, do, like, a, a spin wheel, like, hold his uh, hands and just kind of spin wheel run in the circle and get gain momentum and just count them towards the window. Um, not not, 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 not with traditional physics, no. Um, <laughs> um, are there any other, like, handhelds partway up? Like uh, you, could, you could climb up the side of the building with a, a good climb check. Okay. Um, um, I ask ID ID Tenti. Yeah. Uh, how how high do your extendo legs go? <laughs> oh, uh, that's a <laughs> good question. Be, I imagine they go up just like a foot, that's it, like half an inch, <laughs> like just like a little bit. All right, let me. Uh, so you can ride Brian, roller can coasters. Talk for a minute? Uh, can I talk to you in private? Uh, do you want to send me a message? <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. Send, yeah, yeah. yeah. Send me a message. Um. While he's doing that, um, anybody else have any other thoughts on it? I, I think maybe we can just get on each other's shoulders, like, you know, just a big old human ladder, just one on top of each other's shoulders, and, and Gus will climb up at the end. While like, they're thinking about it, I'm you just... said you could just climb it, right? Uh, wait a minute. Let me give these new legs a try. <laughs> and I, you see, you, you see me uh, kind of do like a little jog in place with my little legs. And then uh, I start to walk. And then you see me walking towards the wall. And then as I get right to the wall, you see me put my foot on the wall. And then I turn and I put my other foot on the, on the wall. And you see me walking up the wall. And I'm just walking sideways up the wall. Holy up. shit. Wow, these really are some good legs. <laughs> I walk up to the balcony. So you guys see ID Ten T like Batman and Robin walk up the side of the building, and wow. sh shimmy into this tiny window, and then like a cartoon, you hear steps, doom 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 doom, as like he comes down the stairway. <laughs> you hear some like tripping and rolling, like a like pots and pans falling down the stairs. A cat, a cat meow. <laughs> A dolphin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah. So as you get okay. down to the door, you, like, ID Tenti, you, you, there's, like, a, an arcane deactivation. Oh, no. You, you, yeah. you know it. You, you were sort of. Oh, okay. Um, All right. So you guys hear these noises, and then the doors swing open. To the Axe and Arcana Tavern. Above the door are swinging two barrels on chains. Um, but you're able to, like, ID Tenti points them out so you don't trip the trap. <laughs> Set by the Dwarf Torn. Um, yeah, nice callback. <laughs> so you guys shimmy inside the Axe and Arcana Tavern, and the door is shut safely behind you. And we'll call that tonight's adventure as you're back in your home base in the city of Ambrosia. Yeah, yeah. Wow. that was pretty good. Yeah, that was a pretty. Wow. That was a pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one last thing. Yeah. Uh, in between on resting. Yeah. Uh, I want to check the contents inside of me. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> oh. So ID Tenti cast spider climb on him. I did. I was going to say, like, uh, it, surely it's not some kind of magic as I was walking up the, stair, uh, up the wall. Um, but yeah, I did. I cast uh, Spider Climb. Um, you probably hear it like a little robotic voice going, Spider Climb initiated. <laughs> Quiet! Stop! I love that that's how spells are. 
Climbing, climbing. Climbing. Not <laughs> legs. <laughs> magic. <laughs> legs suck. Um, Don't badmouth human legs, boy. Alright. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Casting a fifth level spell requires an update. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to continue? Would you like to go? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we got a little information on Drake Dragonstorm. We can go over that again in chat outside of game <clears throat> if anything didn't make sense or if you want to revisit it. Um, yeah, so we're kind of at a, a place right now where you guys can take a breath and refocus on what your characters want to do. Um, while you're in the city, um, your work train and arc, the airship, are still out by the woods. Um, yeah, so lots to do, lots to see. Um, lots of stuff came from this episode. I was real happy with it. Good job, everybody. That was nice. awesome. Um, Thanks. Great job. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're going to call that the end tonight. Thanks for watching. We're here every other Wednesday at 730. Uh, God dang this. <laughs> 730 Central on Wednesdays for the Axe and Arcana Fantasy Adventure D&D game. And then Thursday nights at 8, we play some Overwatch. Um, oh, man, did my Streamlabs just crash on me right at the end? I sure hope sure. not. Uh, thanks everybody for watching and we will catch ya next time. Bye. 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 Goodbye everybody.